um, thank you for joining us everyone um, hopefully included in your uh, PDF pack will have been um, some A4 uh, graph paper you can print off um, for the purposes of today's workshop I'm going to be using A3 uh, graph paper and overlay paper just for ease of recording and um, for scale so you could always join your two sheets of A4 together on a portrait format to create a sheet of A3. Uh, if you haven't got that, it's not a problem. You could use just a regular sheet of uh, A4 printer paper. Um, and you could also then fold in half a sheet of A4 paper and uh, tear it down the side uh, and fix that into the middle and it will create the illusion of some form of perspective um, again, you could do that with A3 paper, um, so a sheet of A3 paper and just stick a sheet of A4 paper into the middle to give yourself a border um, and you'll see how that will work with the graph paper. You then can draw from the corners of the A4 to this corner of the A3 all the way around and it hopefully should create uh, a sense of perspective um, like with the sheet of A4 paper. Um, if you are using tracing paper and graph paper, which I've got here. Um, if you want to just use a little bit of masking tape to stick the edges down, just so then when we're um, passing images underneath, you're not having to constantly go back and hold the paper together. So um, maybe I'll give you a few seconds to either get some masking tape or, or just to stick the two sheets together. Um, so I'll do that now as well. I'll, I'll get started with you. So yeah, if you just want to lay your sheet of tracing paper over the top of uh, the graph paper and um, we'll make a start. So going back to what Louis was mentioning there uh, with the mural I did at Bluebird House in Southampton, um, with that mural in particular, uh, the, the ideas if you like and subject matter, that all came about through um, a workshop I did with um, some of the patients and um, we, we, we played a game where we folded a sheet of A4 paper and um, it, it was based on a, um, a surrealist parlour game called The Exquisite Corpse and we changed it to The Exquisite Bird. So as we folded the sheet of A4 paper, you, you were kind of um, unaware of what was before you or after you, as it were. So you, you were sort of drawing within a sort of two inch by six inch parameter. Um, and then they were passed around the group. So it's quite a nice ice breaking exercise. Um, but it generated some ideas for some of the characters that were in, in, in that wall mural. Um, we don't have that luxury today and we don't need to, but what you should have in the PDF pack here, um, images of uh, sports people. I, I've tried to kind of keep it universal. So we've got footballers, cricketers, basketballers, boss, uh, boxers, um, I think there's some artists, musicians, um, and then there's images like trees and um, cactuses, foliage and, and fauna, um, and then also some animals. Just, just to all, the, all of this information, you can pick and choose what you, what you include in your version. Um, and it's just a way of getting ideas down, I guess. Out of today's workshop, I'd like everyone to walk away with something which could generate a future wall drawing or a future painting or it may it may not generate anything but hopefully by laying uh, these images together it, it could create a pattern it could create sort of interesting dialogue between each other um, but it should just hopefully uh, buy us a bit of time and shortcut the process of, of kind of having to come up with a theme um, so in theory anything could be a theme but I thought for example like with the food source food images you, it may be that you want them to make a wall painting for a cafe or a kitchen space or a dining room. Likewise, if the, the proposed wall was going to be in a gym or an outdoor sports area, you could use the cricketers or the footballers or the athletes. Um, likewise, if it was in an art room, uh, you might want to pick some of your art heroes. Or if it was out an outside space like the Bluebird House mural, maybe you look at birds or wildlife. So I've, I've tried to kind of go utilitarian on what images have been included. We don't have to use everything. You can decide what is the right image for you or images. Um, so if you've all got your graph paper and tracing paper stuck down, and you've hopefully got a pencil, I'm using a, two, a 2H, so it doesn't need to be too soft at this moment. And hopefully you've got a ruler, or if not, just a straight edge, you could use a spine of a book or um, 
possibly just a sheet of paper if you haven't got any instruments with you. Um, and just having done a few trial runs earlier, um, I'm wanting to give the, the plate, the actual image that you'll see, as much space as I can. So if you kind of count, if you're working on an A3 sheet of paper, if you count in three squares, so three centimeters from the left and right, um, and I think we'll come, uh, we'll come five centimeters up from the bottom as well. So if, if we go to the bottom right hand corner and count it five in diagonal, so one, two, three, four, five, and we'll start our, that'll be the bottom of our wall there. And the same on the left hand side, one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? There. And then if we just draw a horizontal line, this will in theory be our horizon line. Uh, so then if we come, uh, sorry, we want to come three in from the left. One, two, three. And the same from the right. It, you can pick and choose again. I'm just doing this for purposes of recording. It just seemed to, to make it easier. And then from the top, if you come down one square and um, one square down, three squares in, if that makes sense. So you should end up with a rectangle within a rectangle. But again, if you haven't got a graph paper, if you haven't got the overlay paper, you don't, you don't really need um, to have this. It's just, it's just making my job easier. Um, for this and if we end up putting up later on. So then you should then draw your top horizontal line. And then if you'd like to, you don't, you don't have to, but again, just give that sense or illusion of, of foreground and background. If you just draw a diagonal line from all of your corners to that, to the rectangle you've drawn on the inside. This is kind of a cheats way of doing it. I don't even think it is single point perspective, but it's near enough. Um, and it's not a bad way if you are planning on drawing a wall. And of course, all walls are different. It may be the wall you're thinking of working towards from your is, is a totally different shape. It might be um, vertical rather than horizontal. So that's what I've drawn is basically what was on my first sheet of graph paper. Um, and then it might be that you've got a door. So let, let's just pres presume that this is an outside space. Um, so we'll, we'll draw a door. And I think most average doors are six foot six. So I think if I've worked out right, it should be 12 squares. Will, 12 squares high will equate to six foot. So two squares is, is one foot. But again, don't get too carried away with that. It's not important. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Let's go there. And I think an average door is, just on, it's about three foot six. So let's pres presume it is an average sized door and we'll make that, well, just for ease, we'll go six squares wide. It's quite a thin door. But again, all doors and windows are different. Um, we could put a window in it as well. Let's presume this is an outside space so we can, we can put a window in. I'm just gonna drop one square down and come in, um, four squares from the inside of that wall and I'll make the window five squares wide and I might come down one, two, three, four, five. That's six centimeters now. So again, you don't have to do this. It might be that your wall is, is um, just a flat wall and it could be an inside wall. But I just think just to give us the sense of, you know, a utilitarian wall, uh, that'll do. So you probably won't need the masking tape again now and you're probably not gonna need the rulers again. And um, so now hopefully you should have a sheet of uh, tracing paper stuck down to your graph paper, you've drawn your rectangle, you've put in your other rectangle, the window and the door. Again, they could be any shape you choose. And then you've got your perspective lines in. And then really you can just start offering up images to fill this space. Ultimately, that's what we're doing. We're gonna to start to create a, a landscape or a sort of a immersive image built up of these images. Um, and it, it might be as a landscape. Um, so maybe thinking of landscapes, let's think about what you, you might find in the landscape. Trees, fauna, 
so I often use in my images uh, foliage that maybe isn't specific or geographically related to the UK. You know, it could be an image from a botanical garden or it could just be a stereotypical cactus. So that's, that's what I'm going to choose here. So this is just a very sort of uh, stereotypical cactus shape. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this uh, to speed up the process. And, and in my usual work, I, I, I usually make paintings. I often don't know what I'm going to paint in a, in, a, in a painting. I have an idea, but there's no, um, there's no blueprint as such. So uh, it's a bit of a learning curve for me, this. But it's, it, what's really good about it is it's just good at getting an image down very quickly. Um, so if we put a cactus in, again, you can choose, you can choose wherever you want to put the the iconography you're choosing. Maybe let's put another tree in. And again, I don't know if this is domestic to the UK, but it's, it's not important. Um, maybe we'll go a bit higher with this tree. And again, if you're, if you're the image you're using, if, it's, um, if it overruns the image or if it's not quite long enough, you can just elaborate that and you know, make the, the trunk longer or make the, the foliage slightly smaller. Or if, if you're, as I'm doing now, putting this tree behind where the window would be, allow the window and the door to, to kind of cut off the image a little bit. Because it might be that once we finish drawing this in, um, actually once, once we start to fill the colours in, it might lose a lot of its obvious quality that it was a tree or a bird or said image. Um, I'm going to do a few more of these in pencil and then I'm going to switch to pen just because, uh, again, I'm not sure how much of this you can see with a a 2H pencil. I didn't want to go much heavier because it would probably smudge the graphite everywhere. Um, so you could just put a, a bit, again, a bit of information in there. A few of the lighter tree leaves, and if, if, you know, where the daylight passes through the tree. You could put some of that in if you wanted. So we've done two, two sort of trees, if you like. Um, again, on the PDF, there was, there was sort of images that were of real things and then there was images of, of just clip art as well uh, again just to shortcut that image if you know if you're thinking of making a uh, an image of um, an image for a kitchen wall um, it may be that you wanted to use motifs that were related to that so you know, an apple or a slice of pizza or and I, what i have found is though um, i'm not advocating junk food but a lot of the more gra graphical images or images that would reproduce better in a graphical form seem to be a burger or a pizza or an ice cream. Um, so I've, I'm including some fruit as well, but again, you can choose whatever you want. Um, so I'm gonna put a, a cockerel on the top of the window. It seems to be quite a nice little plinth for the bird to sit on. Um, so again, use the architecture you've got and things that you might initially think would put you off from using a wall because of certain you know, obtrusive uh, shapes or, maybe a gutter, you could maybe use that to your advantage and it could become quite an interesting um, thing to, to work against, a bit of resistance. Uh, maybe let's put the toucan in as well while we're, while we're putting in birds. And if you decided you, you wanted the bird to go the other way around, it might be that you could either hold your image up to a, um, a window and with daylight, use it as a light box, or you may just be able to pass it under um, and you might still be able to make out part of the the bird, it's not so clear. So let's try it this way around. In fact, I'm now gonna to switch to a pen. Uh, and I'm just gonna use a, a fine liner pen. I think it's water-based. <clears throat> And it, you know, usually if I was to work on a, a drawing or a sketch or a painting, I, I, I'd probably spend several hours on a, an A3 sheet size. So I'm kind of really going through this at a pace, but I'm just very aware that we, we don't have a huge amount of time. Um, so I might stop talking in a minute and just uh, concentrate on getting some of the information down. That's a toucan in there. Um, next, let's go for Frida Kahlo, um, an artist, a painter, and a kind of a hero and heroine to a lot of artists and, and a, a cultural icon as well, I'd say. So let's put her, let's pretty much go in the middle of the wall. 
You can pick and choose how much information you want to include out of the out of the image. For example, you might want to draw in um, the floral pattern on her on her top, or you could just you know shorthand and, and turn it into a polka dot top if you like. It may be you know you're not really interested in Frida Kahlo's work, so don't in, don't include her. Um, you could search for someone else. Do let us know who you're or what, what you're using for your uh, materials, guys, in the Q&A if, if you'd like to uh, keep us updated or any questions coming through at all. And as always, we'd love to see your uh, artworks that you're making at the end of the session, uh, which we'll share the Dropbox link for so, so everyone can put theirs in our gallery on our website. We just had a question about your tattoo, uh, Ryan. Okay. <laughs> Whether you designed it. <laughs> uh, misspent youth, I think we'll call that. Yeah, I, I had that done many, many moons ago. I think it was 21 and I'm 40 this year. So 19 years ago, the front <laughs> not fallen off. <laughs> uh, did I design it? Uh, I'm not sure if I designed it. I think I went into a, a, a tattoo parlor, not really knowing um, what design to go for and I saw a star and I just said can we make it bigger so I think that's what we did but I, I, I often forget I've got it and I think people think I've just bioed it on as well so it's, it's quite funny. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to uh, draw over the pencil lines just to speed up um, and it might allow people to, to catch up a little bit. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is uh, the good thing about using pencil and then fine liner afterwards is uh, if, you, if you're not quite happy with the design in pencil, you can either erase it or, um, you know, adjust it with a pen. It's kind of hard to go back and do it the other way around. So once you've put the lines in, in pen, it, it might be harder to uh, edit afterwards. So, um, you know, it might be that you want to make this totally in, um, in pencil. And for example, that cactus, it, it seemed um, quite bulbous uh, towards the bottom. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thin that out a little bit and just change the design. And it might be that we add another sort of cactus paddle or two in there as well. So you can change your design as, as you're going, but it's um, what I don't want people to do is sort of um, make, feel like they're going to make a mistake and think themselves out of making the drawing. And that, that can be all artists' worst nightmare is you overthink something or you um, overanalyze it and, and you end up not actually getting anything done. Um, likewise, you can underthink something, and and actually, I think what I was saying to you earlier, Louis, is th this process is quite alien to my uh, sort of usual art making process. But even I can take something from this because I can see that, see this clear benefits of uh, actually planning an artwork out. I can see that would make a lot of sense, um, and actually, it seems like a very obvious statement um, but you kind of get used to your sort of working patterns I suppose. Um, the other thing I was thinking is I, I put in some uh, some shapes of anatomy so there's some hands um, there are some silhouettes of faces again just to sort of shortcut uh, that association to a figure. Um, we're all figures, we're all people and I have made figurative painting so I thought I'd include some images that are kind of again universal and actually if we use a crop on these now near the cactus, they could start to read as partly a plant structure or, or, or partly a figure as well. Um, so maybe we'll overlay some of these hands in front of the cactus and um, in front of Frida as well. So Ryan, we've had a question as to where we can find your murals. Um, and maybe you could just talk a bit about, you know, the kind of scale that you normally work on. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not an expert, you know, I'm not a, um, by trade, if you like, by profession, I'm not a, a mural painter. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I work in my studio as I am here and I make paintings on canvas. That's my sort of, um, in layman's term, that's sort of my bread and butter. Uh, 
the largest wall mural I've done was for hospital rooms and that was at a uh, Bluebird House. So it was a, a Southern NHS uh, unit in Southampton and that was early this year. And then the, other, the only other real experience I have of murals are painting my kids' bedrooms. And, I, and again, that's the thing, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not dismissing you, you need a qualification, as you probably do, but anyone can be an artist. Anyone can have a go at doing a wall mural. I wouldn't go and just start painting a wall without having a, a blueprint or a diagram. So that's what's good about this. So if you all have a go at it, you, you might walk away from this thinking differently that you can't do something. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, Natalie, I don't have a huge amount of uh, mural painting experience other than, you know, I've been making paintings for 23 years and it's quite closely associated with that, I suppose. Ultimately, all you're doing is making an image. You might be that you, you already have an image. You might just be, you know, replicating a, a design or a motif. You know, imagine if it was a football club and, and you wanted their crest painting, you'd just be enlarging their, their image. Um, with this, it's slightly more intuitive to how and what you want to include. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, let's put an ice cream in there as well. Why not? That question did come from a, a unit in, in Roehampton. So as I said before, there is a, a show of Ryan's paintings in the Whitechapel Gallery. If uh, any of you are able to travel and see it. Yeah, I think that exhibition runs for a few more weeks as well. I think it's on until the end of August. I think I saw somewhere earlier, I think some, some of the days in the week it's free as well. It's a free exhibition to go to. Um, because it's outside, let's put some more uh, fauna and flora in there. So I think this is a fern. Again, I'm not an expert in, in botany, but you know we can all appreciate a plant or a tree or nature. And, uh, and I think that was what was quite nice about the, um, the Bluebird House uh, mural is the, the first site visit I went on, it was, I think Tim might be able to confirm this, but I think it was sort of late summer, early autumn, and the environment was very different to when we actually uh, made, the, made the piece because the seasons changed and, um, it was, it was kind of almost full, full in bloom, the garden there, or a lot of, you know, I think it was a, um, a service user was uh, growing crops and he had like a kind of a, um, I suppose like a, co a cottage garden, if you like. Um, and then we went to actually make the, the mural, a lot of the crops had died away. So it, it felt like a very different space, a much sparser space. Uh, so that's what was, that's what I quite liked about the, the idea of the backdrop of the war mural was that, it, throughout the seasons it would change or it wouldn't change the environment around it would change um well you had to be quite brave um in the kind of five degree weather as well yeah i think the week we chose to do it we had um well louis will be able to confirm this it was uh it, i don't think it quite hailed but the, i think was it storm what was the storm that was it early in the year uh storm dennis was it yeah it was dennis Dennis, Dennis the Menace, he, he sort of turned up for a little bit, didn't he? And then... Um, Some very yeah. high winds. What's that, sorry? High, yeah, we had high winds. Uh, again, why, why not, like, let's make this quite an exotic garden. Um, okay, yeah. It might be as you're, uh, like, overlaying images, you know, the, the first image you put down might not work anymore. And if you have worked in pencil, you could rub that out or you could just leave it and, and, and work over the top of it. You know, ultimately you could keep overworking the design to a point where, um, you know, you, you could end up with a very abstract motif. Um, and that, that could work, that could be quite nice. But for the, for the purpose of this um, workshop today, I'm kind of going to make a drawing within like half an hour, 40 minutes, I think. Um, so we can kind of, hopefully sort of understand why we're using the overlay paper. Um, and again, you know, this, this is something that is pretty universal. You could apply doing, you could apply this, apply this process, sorry, to, to lots of things. Um, if, you, if you haven't made a, a, a drawing or a painting in a long time, you, you might feel apprehensive of it. You could sort of gently, sort of slowly get used to the idea by, by using something like this. It takes a lot of pressure off. I mean, I made a drawing uh, earlier in the week on the same scale. I think it's about three hours. Again, we just don't have that luxury. So uh, I thought that's why we'd, we'd 
we do it this way around. Um, I've got some silhouettes of, of uh, people uh, that are just generic clip art and graphically they work quite well. So maybe we'll include some of these in here as well. And I suppose what I've, what I've come to realise with my own work is there is a kind of a, sym a symmetry of some description. Um, and I've often sort of referred to that as a kind of a broken symmetry, uh, partly to excuse um, my sy symmetry not being perfect, I suppose. It sounded quite good at the time. But you know, what I suppose what I'm doing here is I'm trying to sort of uh, not make it too top heavy and, and balance it out. And that'll hopefully become more apparent as we, as we work um, through the image. Um, I've printed off two female portraits, both looking the same way. So I'm going to turn one of those around um, and hopefully it'll, I'll be able to Hopefully I'll be able to see enough of it, I can, yeah. Again, you should be able to, this should, should work on A4 paper. You know, you don't necessarily need the, uh, the overlay paper. Ryan, we've also just had a, a question, and um, once you've done that part, um, about if you could just recap how you got that perspective um, in, the, in the box um, with the lines coming in, if you could maybe just very quickly recap. Um, yeah, sure. So I started with them. Um, I think I put the bottom line in first. You don't have to. That was that was just my horizon line, and I think I worked out as three squares from each side. So I'll, I'll draw the line in now. So it's just a horizontal line, three squares from each side, left and right, and then I think we came up one, two, one, two. <laughs> I think five squares up. Uh, yeah, five squares up from the bottom. And obviously, so that, yeah, you, you three squares in from the left and right hand side, five squares up from the bottom, and then one square down from the top. So those squares on my graph paper are, you know, one centimetre square. Um, but again, I, I, the other reason why I came to this format is I, I thought to myself, how big is a wall? Um, I don't think there's an exact answer to that. But I thought if, if, these, if the maths worked out, two two square by, no, two squared, so two centimetres by two centimetres would equate to one foot. Um, so that would be an, av you know, an, an, an average sized outdoor wall space. Um, but then I suppose if you look at the Bluebird house wall, that doesn't apply because that was a kind of a, a huge wall. So it, it ultimately it just meant I had a, a decent you know, rectangular plate to, to work on for this. I'll draw the door in as well, just because that's done then. And also with the graph paper, it just means that I don't have to spend time measuring out everything. It's just there um, straight in front of me. But I don't think I've used graph paper since sort of technology class at school. It's quite nostalgic in that sense, I suppose. I'm really aware that maybe these sort of uh, um, embarrassing silences could be a bit awkward as I draw. It's probably not the most entertaining of things, but um, anyway, we're going. Feel free to send me some jokes, maybe that could be a good way of passing time, hey? No, it's nice to just watch you working. I think everyone finds it kind of therapeutic as well as joining in, and I'm sure they're all drawing along. Uh, we've had a couple more questions come in. Uh -huh. um, so one asking, in your practice, do you do many drawings of your ideas prior to starting a painting? Good question. Um, I mean, I used to, um, and, I, and I still do to some degree, but they're not necessarily drawings like this. It might be a, a, an A5 sketch pad, a sketchbook even. Um, it might just be a kind of a doodle and some notes just to remind myself of what I was thinking at the time. Um, and then that might then sort of get pinned up on the studio wall like this the stuff behind me. I have a wall here with all the things of, you know, failed paintings, postcards from museum exhibits, newspaper clippings. So in a way they, they almost become like a sketchbook as well. Um, but when it comes to actually making the physical sketch, uh, some of the paintings I can flip the camera later on, they are more intuitive in the sense of, I have an idea of how it will look in, in my head or I have an idea of how, it, how a painting, 
how I'd like it to look. And often it doesn't, the two don't equate. So the, the finished painting kind of looks how I imagined, but certain things change and that's due to do with scale sometimes. Um, and that's often because an A5 sketch pad then doesn't translate to an eight foot by seven foot canvas. It's hard to, you know, a line, a very quick sporadic line in a sketchbook could take minutes or hours on a painting and it, 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 it may have lost its sort of interest. So uh, many years ago, I, I stopped drawing altogether for paintings because I found like, at the time, I, I felt like there wasn't enough time for drawing, which was in, uh, in retrospect, was a bit of a stupid idea on my part. Um, and I, and I thought, actually, what I found the most enjoyable was, was finding the image or finding the idea. Um, and that could have been because it, was, it, it took me by surprise or I wasn't sure what it was. And then I found when I then took that drawing and made that into a painting, it had lost all of its interest and the intrigue I had in the image had gone. So I thought as, as an idea of, of kind of shortcutting that and stopping that from happening, I'd just stop the drawing process and just hopefully allow uh, goodwill and good fortune to help and for a number of years it worked but you know I ha have to say now time is a lot more precious I suppose so um, I can I can see both sides of the argument but I suppose a long way to come back to your question I I do make drawings but not like this this I'd say this is more of a dive I'd kind of refer this to, as a diagram I suppose um, let's put in Wayne Rooney um, so I'm a Derby County fan, so you know I'll, I'll slightly personalise it. Uh, you know, other teams are available, but none are as good as Derby. So um, that's a joke, by the way. But it's a year since Derby signed Wayne Rooney. I saw today, so let's include him, the former England captain. We've had another question about how you'd scale this template onto the wall, Ryan. Uh -huh. Well, uh, there's a few ways you could do that and, and I'll, if I have time towards the end I'll show you and, and what I do is once you have a finished drawing, let's say it's the one you're working on, you could um, photocopy that drawing so you're not destroying the original drawing and then draw a grid over the top of that and then those grids, hopefully the two centimetre by two centimetre grid um, equating to a foot or one metric foot, 30.5 30, 30 centimetres, uh, should hopefully allow and then you can grid up from that and I'll, I'll show you later on or if you don't have a photocopier um, or if, again if um, you have the technology available you could um, have it photographed either using a smartphone or a, phot a photographer turn it into a JPEG and then use a projector to enlarge it um, I don't really like using projectors but for a, a big wall uh, you could do that uh, another option could be to use a different kind of overlay paper like an acetate paper um, and enlarge it with no HP, but I, I think that's probably a very antiquated way of doing it now. Um, so yeah, there are, there are a few different ways of doing it. Uh, let's put Storms in as well. So a musician, a footballer, an artist, a cricketer. Uh, let's put Storms in here. That'd be good. And again, you know, it may be that you don't really want to make a drawing that has, it might be that you're, you know, you're making an internal wall drawing that it doesn't necessarily need to have any iconography I'm using. And it might be that, you know, you, you could work as a, a group, there might be two or three of you who um, are interested in doing a wall drawing. It may be that there's only one and it, and it might be that you could, you could include the people, um, your peers and your contemporaries and ask them for their in input. And it might be that, you know, someone supports Arsenal or someone supports Tottenham, uh, someone supports Manchester United. It, it might be that uh, you could make the football kits anonymous. So it's not really about the team, it's just about the, the, the passion you have for the sport. And that could apply to everything, I suppose. You know, um, you might be that your garden, if it's an outside space, it's, it, you're just growing, you know, um, coriander or lavender or thyme or parsley you could just use those I'm, I'm just using sort of images that i think will reproduce well and will kind of to hand i suppose um but yeah I, i've tried to keep it sort of utilitarian and, and open for everyone um and again it you know don't feel like you have to um 
overthink this because in a way what we're doing here is we're, get, we're getting we're ultimately we're filling a rectangle we're filling a space um, and it might be that through doing this workshop it's 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 more about um, placement of imagery and iconography and how they relate to each other um, and it might be that it's those blank spaces in between that you find interesting and it's it's how you then fill those up with other information um, and yeah, ultimately we're, make, we're putting shapes and that's all we're doing really, you know, whether it's a human being or a, um, a donut or a bird uh, or a cricketer or a footballer or a boxer. It's just, we're just filling in, we're filling in space and making shapes, I suppose, in, in simple terms. That's what we're doing. Try and get his microphone in. So just to keep you uh, aware of time, Ryan, we've got five minutes left of the original advertised 45 minutes, but I okay. think- Crikey, like, sorry, I'll press on. No, no, you don't need to press on too much. I think like the last couple of weeks, we might uh, carry on up to three o'clock. Um, so if anyone has to leave us, you can always access this uh, workshop later, but um, we'll, we'll carry on until three. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll get a bit of a wriggle on though. <laughs> Full of anxiety now. This is uh, pressure. This is not, pressure. not not the usual way you work. Someone telling you how how, uh, how quick. No, but this is the thing. I'm I'm always late home because I say I've only been another five minutes, and that that five minutes in my head is actually three hours. Um, and uh, yeah, but you know, it's, you know, if you if you're not familiar with making drawings, I think this is a, a decent amount of time to get something down. So I've just put two simplified hands making a heart. Uh, and I thought that was quite a nice framing device. So that's sort of hidden part in the beard, part in the toucan. Um, and we can then start to fill in this other, other space here. Let's put another hand at the top. Again, I'm, I'm just sort of, you know, going with whatever we've got here. I can show some other finished ones. If we, if we do run out of time, I've sort of made attempts at uh, other versions or other proposed wall drawings, let's say. What would be other, a good thing to put in there? Let's put in a, I think this is a hummingbird. So let's put the hummingbird. Really lovely comment um, from a unit that's joined us uh, to say thank you for this opportunity. It's been really engaging and everyone's been having a really good conversation while creating their own, uh, their own design. So that's lovely to hear. And um, if you have your designs and you'd like to upload them to the Dropbox, we're going to be linking that um, via an email through Eventbrite um, sort of later on today. So do photograph them because we'd love to see them and pop them in our online gallery. The other thing that we will be announcing in the next few days is an art swap that we'll be doing, where whether you're at home or if you're in a mental health unit, you can send in artworks that you might have made during one of the sessions and then we will swap them for another artwork by another person from a unit or from from home or from an artist and send them out to you so we'll be advertising that in the next few days but it's great if you keep hold of the artworks and especially if there's one that you might want to send in and swap for a different artwork again you might now start to see on on, on the on your drawing where you've got kind of void spaces, if you like. Um, you could just start to fill in those spaces. You could either use some of the um, clip art or, or sort of photographs of people, objects, whatever they may be. Um, or you could just start to fill it with shapes. Again, that, that was the other thing I was thinking you could use shapes or it's quite nice to have as backdrops. Um, or you could, you know, that's the other thing. It may be that you decide you want actually to have quite a lot of negative space uh, to give more of a focus, I suppose, on the, on the characters. Let's put that. Let's put a cat in as well, why not? I might actually just try and get a bit of colour into it as well. Okay. Again, don't feel like you have to use you know, the exact colour to represent the exact thing. So it might be that actually the whole process of this wall 
drawing on mural is, is to brighten up an, env an environment. Um, and subject matter, although it's important, don't, don't overthink it at the moment. Um, just while I've got the blue pen in my hand, I'm going to fill in the, the fern as well. You know, it might be on yours that you, um, you might decide you want to kind of uh, use a rainbow pattern. So d don't feel like you have to colour said thing in, in blue. Let's change that and we'll <coughs> you can mix the colours up. And that's what I found quite interesting doing this, is it's, the, it's those decisions that could have almost possibly been taken out of your hand. Um, you know, I'll probably over procrastinate about um, which colour to use in a painting, and I, I maybe don't need to that much. Um, so doing this exercise has certainly sort of taught me something that I didn't realise as well. You know, maybe going out of your comfort zone is, is actually quite a good thing. Um, the two can, for example, you could sort of make him multicolored um, again with what I was saying about the image earlier I'm trying to balance out um, not only the image but with the color as well so what colors work together what colors don't work together what if you lay two colors next to each other that just don't work could that create an interesting dialogue and you know that's why it's good to try things out like this on a um, on a drawing rather than actually on a on, on a wall because you might not have that time or that luxury or patience um, again I'm just using very I'm just reading my kids uh, felt tips to do this and in, a, in a way I suppose what you're doing is you're um, you're kind of colouring in it's like a giant sketch you know colouring in book of your own of your own design uh, yellow is always nice. We've had a question, Wayne, asking whether you ever use text in your work. Do I ever use text? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say not, but I, I do remember making a few paintings uh, when I was graduating that had a bit of text in there. Um, but as a rule, probably not, no. I think um, it's weird though that I, I, do, I do like art with text in it, but I, I don't actually have. Uh, I would say that I don't use, usually use text in my own work. But you could. Let's be doing maybe a pink tree. And again, I'm just using this for, for, for speed and quickness. I did, I did try one um, in ink earlier and it ended up sort of, uh, it made the, the image fold in on itself, which wasn't good for the purposes of doing this. Um, but again, if you're taking more time, you could use acrylic paint. If you weren't using overlay paper, you could use kind of gouache or, or watercolor. Um, but, you know, felt like pens will give the desired effects for, for us here now. I'm not sure how much of this you can actually see on the uh, on the camera, but it's not looking too bad at the moment. No, it's coming pretty nicely. That's good. Again, I, I mean, uh, in the uh, in the you know past, I have borrowed from nature, and it but it might not be as obvious as you know a parakeet or a or a toucan. But it may be you know you borrow the pattern off of a a snake or a I don't know a tiger or um, off a giraffe. I mean that's the other thing I would say. Certain certain iconography has sort of come into my work which maybe wasn't there a few years ago, and that's as much as sort of outside influence of uh, you know having kids or seeing something in a park or um, you know. Rainbows have, have appeared in my work recently as well, the last sort of three or four years. And I think that's again um, due to the, the colours I've, I've used in, in paintings and the way that I'd, I'd maybe sort of um, layer, layer paint. But you know, who doesn't love a rainbow?
I mean, I, I would usually put a bit more um, time into considering what, what colours are going to lay next to each other, but it's, it's quite nice when you're not really that sure because you don't really have that control. I'm not, I'm not expecting anyone to <laughs> uh, turn a cricketer into a, someone who's had their face painted. But it's, it's just quite interesting just to kind of get images down and, uh, and start to fill them in. But yeah, you know, my, my paintings, uh, I primarily use oil paint and it takes days, if not weeks to dry. So again, it's a very different working pattern. That's, I suppose over the years that's brought me a, a much more sedate, uh, tranquil way of making an image. Um, partly allowing, you know, having to wait for the paint to dry before you can go over the next layer. The beauty of felted pens or charcoal or, you know, uh, I don't know, permanent marker even, is it, it dries instantly, but it, it maybe doesn't have the same uh, effect as, a, as an oil painting, but you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't use oil paint on a, on a wall unless it was the Sistine Chapel and your name was Michelangelo. Um, well, that's our gent. We've just had a uh, message saying that because of the transparency of the tracing paper, it would look amazing taped on a window. A bit like a, uh, yeah, like a stained glass window almost. Yeah. So could, this could be a finished artwork in itself in a window. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, I'm kind of being a bit dismissive of, of it as a medium, I suppose, <laughs> but um, so I'll, do, I'll do the rainbow. But yeah, no, they, they I filled some of them in. Uh, so it's the whole, the whole image, if you like, is um, totally filled in with colour. And they do, they, they are interesting. And you can get a lot of information down very quickly. And I think that's what the process of this was. And, and actually, the really lovely thing about it is that you don't have to have any previous experience. You know, you're not really making, um, you know, decisions that are going to affect anything other than a sheet of A3 or A4 paper. I just made a mistake there, but don't worry, you know, we'll see it. <laughs> There's no such thing as mistakes anyway, so we're all right. Blue. How are we doing for time, Louie? Um, it's now 10 minutes to, so. Okay, bit of time left. Just under. I might get a slightly thicker pen out just to get a bit more. Over here. I mean, you know, it might be that you, you want to sort of fill the windows in as well, just to kind of give a bit more of a defined. Um, you know, rather than thinking it's a rectangle or you know, the door, you don't have to, but it's, uh, I found it easier on the, uh, on the other ones that I made, just so, uh, anyway, should I do a blue Peter here's what I made earlier attempt? Would that be easier? You, you, you yeah, I mean, it'd be lovely. Could you hold up your, um, your one to the front camera? Yeah, so that's what, that's what we're looking like at the moment, but I do have a few others that I've started that aren't far from being finished, that would give the similar sort of idea, I suppose. Great, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll pass over to, to them and then, yeah, you can sort of explain the grinning up a little bit. Yeah. So, literally, here's one I made just before we came on earlier. Um, so, pretty much the same iconography. So, we've got, um, who have we got? Oh, we've got a box of Prince Nazim Hamad, Wayne Rooney, an apple. We've got some bull rushes. They, they're always quite nice uh, uh, images. Stormzy. Um, and then just you know, a giraffe, cheeseburger, a toucan, uh, a ballerina, a hummingbird, a, a kind of a domestic pigeon. Um, what else have we got in here? Oh, a few athletes, there's a few runners in the foreground. And in, in theory, I suppose what, I'm, what I was trying to illustrate was that you could end up overthinking what you're going to include. And actually, when you come to making the overall finished thing, um, it might not be that obvious what things are. You're creating a pattern, possibly. Um, so let's say that that was your finished uh, artwork. I did a few others which kind of, I was just trying out different things like where, where the door would lay. 
don't know if you can see that one. If I hold it up behind the sheet of paper. Um, you know, and this one I did at the door centrally and I made the wall slightly taller just to, just to work out that perspective. Um, but it was just interesting, you know, along the top here, I, you know, rather than the hands being at the bottom, again, it was just uh, the, the shorthand literally of, of representing something figurative. The hands were quite a nice pattern and it, it sort of it echoed like the fern in the foreground and um, a few of the other sort of botanical structures. Um, so there, there are a few that I worked on. And then I know someone asked earlier about the, um, how you go about reading up something. Um, well, this is just another sheet that, again, this isn't necessarily the right way to do it, it's just our way. Um, so this is just a sheet of uh, overlay paper or tracing paper. Again, you could, you could probably do it with regular printer paper, but it just might be a little trickier. Um, so yeah, it's a plain sheet of paper, and then I just laid that over the drawing I'd made. So you can see the door there as well. Want to go to the front camera or the back camera? Um, That's yeah. perfect, yeah. yeah. So then I'll just stick that down as a bit of white tack. So let's say, for example, you've made, a, you've made your artwork for the wall. Um, you could then go, again, you, you, might, you might decide there are things in your drawing that fail, that don't work. Um, but there are certain things that you really like and want to include. So, like, I, for example, I really liked the, the, the way the bulrushes uh, laid over the apple because it was like a shift in scale. Um, and in theory, perspectively, the apple would be smaller if it was in the, in the background and the bulrushes would be larger in the foreground. But, you know, anything goes in this mural. And I, I think perspective and scale, they went out the window. Uh, let's draw the cat in. So I'm just doing this to kind of get, go back to that question of how would you scale this up in a, in a real life um, scenario. So let's, there we go. So I've, I've just drawn, I don't know if you can see that. So I've just drawn the bulrushes and the, the cat in. Um, and let's say hypothetically we had our door where it was. And these squares that I've drawn in here uh, are just twice the size of the graph paper square. So these are two square by two square, which I worked out on this wall were a foot each. Um, so for example, and if you were to then go outside now and, and draw your wall, which looks exactly like this um, with the door here, you know, you'd, you'd start from that bottom right hand side of the door um, and draw into your, you know, you, you just use, and you'd have drawn a grid on the wall, sorry, that's what I should say. So the grid that's on here would be echoed with the grid that you've drawn on your wall on the outside of the building or inside, wherever it may be. Um, and there'd be this, there'd be to scale that with the same size. So I think this is one, two, three, four. Let's say it's 18 squares. So that's 18 foot, um, I think, let's say by 10 foot. That just seems like an averagey sort of outside wall space. So then you just translate that into your, whatever lines pass, you know, whatever drawn lines pass through the gridded lines, that would then directly translate to how you would scale that up on your wall. So your wall lines would be 30 centimetres or 30.5 centimetres by 30.5, so a foot square. And you'd grid that up with chalk or um, what else could you use to get rid of? Chalk or um, French chalk or a, a kind of a charcoal possibly. Charcoal would work, you'd have to dust it away afterwards. Um, and then you just again, with charcoal or pencil or chalk, you could draw out your lines. So whatever appears in this grid that you wanted to include from your wall drawing, you would then just scale up. Um, so for example, a cat's tail pretty much takes up a full one foot square there uh, and is one, two, three foot tall. So you'd see a, a cat in, would actually be, you know, a time and a half possibly the size of a regular cat. So you're kind of playing around with perspective and scale and uh, like that, that foreground, background, it, you, you could end up with some really interesting um, motifs and marks, I guess. So that's how I would go about putting it up. There might be other ways of doing it. It might be you just take a photograph or scan it and then turn that into a JPEG or a TIFF and, and enlarge it. But when it came to Bluebird House, um, we pretty much had a blueprint. We had our drawing and uh, we just scaled it up with... Uh, what did we have, Lou? We had a, a spirit level, um, a, paint, a telescopic paint roller extension for the first day. That was a good straight edge. 
um, paint, charcoal, and we, we just scaled it up in a very old school way with with a grid. Um, on the, the left and right hand side, there's a geometric shape which is filled with diamonds. Um, so it's kind of important to get those pretty much bang on. Um, and that was done over a huge wall, and we used a very similar method to this. Great, thanks very much, Ryan. Um, it's been a brilliant session. Um, I think yeah, it is three now, so we'll bring it to a close, but hopefully ev everyone's joined in and has made some great artwork too. Um, we just had a message uh, saying that um, ladies at one unit are keen to develop a mural of their own for their ward garden. Oh, wow. Um, so that's really uh, exciting. Um, just a few other uh, announcements. We've got Tams in Rally uh, running next week's session. That'll be a rainbow colour session, um, which is the last session in this uh, run. But um, after that, we're starting an autumn term of sessions. So there's going to be a load more of these sessions on Thursdays. So they're not over. Um, uh, and as Tim said, we'll be announcing our um, art swap uh, um, program uh, in the next couple of weeks too. So thank you very much to everyone who's joined and thanks to Ryan. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing all your uh, responses as well. Bye. <laughs> thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having us, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers, Tim. Thank you.